Two years ago, Mrs. Zoe told her husband and son that she was seriously ill. She spent some time running around to doctors, undergoing numerous tests. She was warned that if she did not give up sweets, diabetes would knock on her door very soon. The woman seized on the idea and decided to use it to her advantage. Oh Alex, I'm going to die. She came home crying. Why did I have to go through this, Zoe? What's wrong? Her husband was scared. What did the doctor tell you? Alex was worried. He said I don't have long to live. Soon, my body will begin to rot, and then my kidneys will fail, she sobbed. What kind of disease do you have? Alex couldn't understand. Zoe explained, let me get this straight. I was diagnosed with diabetes. She sighed, that's it, Alexander. I'm finished. The husband was well aware that to some extent, it was his wife's fault. So much to eat sweets, it's just a horror. She ate several kilograms of cakes, candies, and cakes a day. In fact, most of her paycheck was spent on desserts. But that was to be expected, he gave her an angry look. I'm sorry, but you have to limit yourself a little. All you do is eat. What I don't understand is why don't you get fat? You must have some kind of healer in you. Look at your stomach, you're skinny, and it's like a watermelon. What the hell are you talking about? Zoe came to her senses. I don't have any parasites judging by your personality, you do. You two are perfect for each other, my husband snapped at me. What an idiot, the wife was offended and unable to find support from her husband, closed herself in her room. But Zoe got what she wanted. She gave up her job, but she also began to parasitize her family. Sometimes, her weekends were so unpredictable that the family didn't know how to react. Zoe was hiding behind a pile of bricks in a neighbor's yard. It was already dark, and she was waiting for her daughter-in-law. Jack, shut your mouth, she ordered the dog that was barking at her. She checked her cell phone. She estimated that her daughter-in-law should be back from work within 20 minutes. This was the fourth day Zoe had been on duty. Her husband knew she'd gone to the neighbor's house, and he would definitely never go to Katie's. Alex considered her even worse than his Zoe. So, she had both an alibi and the opportunity to conduct her operation in complete safety. Suddenly, something squeaked and seemed to hit Zoe's hair. She shrieked and ran out of hiding. A bat, she whispered. She gingerly felt her head. The hair was still there. She heaved a sigh of relief. Everyone knows the legend that bats can latch onto blondes, and even though Zoe's hair was dark, still, there was no telling what might happen. The woman saw the headlights of a car at the beginning of the street. Her intuition told her it was Lana. For some reason, Zoe was sure her daughter-in-law had a lover. Now she had to do the most important thing, get proof. The other day, she'd snuck a look at her cell phone, checked it, and didn't see any suspicious numbers. She wanted so badly to find some number with a name like Bunny, Kitty, or Lion Cub. But, alas, other than Mr. Michael, Jeremy, and so on, she found nothing. She's just being cryptic, Zoe said to herself at the time. I'm sure one of them is her lover. But is that how you sign a spouse's number, husband? You could have written favorite Alex's favorite husband or something like that. Although Zoe herself once signed her husband Alexander's number as gravy to get back at him, and one day her crime was solved. The woman forgot her phone in the house and was digging in the vegetable garden. It was a day off. Alexander went to the market. The phone had already rung several times throughout the house. Alex couldn't stand it and left the room, wanted to rest today, but his mother, as always, did not let him. The son came up and saw the word GR on the screen. He already wanted to take it out to his mother, but did not have time. Lord, and who was it that she could call? So, out of curiosity, he looked at the number, Dad. Alex couldn't believe his eyes. What's wrong with her head? After the return of his father, the son could not stand it and told him everything. Alexander was furious. That's it. I'm filing for divorce, he shouted at the whole house. You've crossed the line. You're the only one who can be a greaseball. 
You do nothing but get on everyone's nerves. Zoe tried to justify herself by saying that she wanted to sign her neighbor's number, but she'd mistaken it for his, but I certainly won't believe it, her husband was angry, and such things, you are not mistaken. But the next day, according to Zoya, her sugar spiked sharply, and all day she lay in bed dying. Her husband didn't even want to hear from her, so the woman had to play out her dying state for almost a week. She made a great effort to show her lack of appetite, but after midnight, when everyone was already asleep, Zoe would pull out a small bag from under the bed and gorge herself on chocolates with great pleasure. Death was death, but she couldn't go without sweets. The car stopped near the house, and the mother-in-law, holding her breath, began to wait. She absolutely had to memorize the license plate number, but to her great disappointment, she discerned that it was a cab. Lana had come in a cab. Oh well, I'll catch you with your lover, she was angry to herself. You won't fool me. Zoe waited another ten minutes and walked into the courtyard. She practiced for a few seconds to make a pained face. She glanced into the kitchen where the table was already set. You're here at last, her husband threw her a disgruntled look. I see that you have nothing to do at home. As soon as I ask you for something, you are immediately busy. But of course, idle chatter with a friend is much more important. Alexander, I feel bad enough, my wife put her hand to her forehead. I think I have a fever. I'd better go have dinner without me tonight. Why did we wait for you? Alexander cursed. All right, let's sit down. He invited his son and daughter-in-law. Zoe went into the room. She slept in her room from time to time, especially when she was fighting with her husband or when she was sick. She quickly reached into her nightstand and pulled out a chocolate bar. She closed her eyes in pleasure. Her husband had been cutting back on her cash lately, so she had to come up with more and more legends. So, according to the latest version, Zoe goes to the clinic for paid treatments. In general, she was very lucky. Alexander was a serious man, he never tested his wife. But how could he marry someone like that? Even after many years, he couldn't understand. And if it wasn't for Alex, he would have divorced her long ago. But maybe she will change after Alex, sirs quarrels with his wife all the time, said the son. After all, she won't survive without you. That's the problem, son. I and you are sacrificing ourselves to this monster, he sighed. Alexander had no illusions about his wife for a long time. He had told both his son and her that if a worthy woman comes my way, I will leave you. He couldn't stand it any longer, he once said. But a word is one thing, and in reality, it was not easy to do such a thing. But nevertheless, after that, Zoe calmed down a bit. Before that, she was always pushing her buttons. Lately, her husband smelled something she was up to, but he just couldn't figure out what she was up to. The chocolate was eaten, and Zoe, satisfied, went to bed. She really liked her current life. Almost two years ago, she had to work at her factory, and for 12 hours at that. Her husband was a mechanic, he could repair cars even till morning. His salary was good, and she decided that she was tired. That Alexander got money easily, not like her. He could have tea several times a day and leave work if necessary. And Zoe was like a dog on a chain, tied to her machine. They let them go for a break only at a certain time. I must say that Alexander told his wife many times to look for something else. But whether out of spite or fear of starting something new, Zoe always refused. She had long dreamed of not working. She just wanted to get her husband to do it in a very sneaky way. But he was not sure enough to tell her that she had worked enough and now she could deservedly enjoy her vacation. Zoe's retirement was still a long way off, so she really wanted to spend that time at home. It didn't work out, so she had to make a play about her serious illness. Zoe, but you must realize that if you work, we can help, Alex, her husband, once told her. And I'm not made of iron, Alexander. Are you trying to kill me? She said in a weak voice. I never thought that you are so cruel. Alexander waved his hand and told his son that other than giving them his house until he and Lana bought something, there was nothing he could do to help him. 
Can I get you anything? The son peeked into his mother's room. Mom, can you hear me? Oh, I fell asleep. No strength at all, she said. It's like she came to her senses. Son, thank you. I don't want anything. Alex wanted to make a joke about the smell of chocolate that filled the room, but he kept silent. Leave her alone, Dad, as C scolded, go rest. I'll do the dishes myself, Dad, let me do it. Lana came up to him, go talk to Alex, she suggested. Lana, despite all her outward naivety, from the first meeting, realized with what monster she would have to fight. Now, the first thing Zoe did was to ask her some unseemly questions. She wanted to get a feel for her future daughter-in-law. Tell me, Lana, did you have a serious relationship before Alex? She asked, an inappropriate question. In my standing, the best wife for any man is the woman who was able to preserve her innocence for him. Lana sat there rid with shame. She wanted to tell Zoe how stupid she was, but then she realized she did it on purpose. You know, the modern family is built on different principles. Such attitudes as yours have long since become obsolete. The girl smiled. The main thing is what a person has now, not what once was. Lana immediately disliked Zoe. The woman realized that it would not be easy to twist her, and Alex was always sticking up for his wife. So, Lana was causing her a lot of problems, increasing competition, and preventing her from being a leader in the family. Zoe made a sad face and headed for the bedroom. Her husband was already in bed reading some book. Alexander, I'm coming to you. I'll sleep with you tonight, she said pitifully. Something on the soul is somehow heavy. It's because of harm, not taking his eyes off the book, said Alexander. If you came with good intentions, then stay. But if again with some nonsense, it is better not to strain me. I am already tired today. Alexander, how do you talk to your wife? I saw tears in her eyes, everyone has husbands like husbands, but I'm a real desperate. You know if I had a place to go, I'd have left you a long time ago, I don't mind, he took off his glasses and put the book on the nightstand. Zoe, tell me, are you going to be 50 soon? What do you want from life? Well, first of all, health, the woman took the opportunity and quickly jumped into bed, do you know how scary it is to live when you realize you could die at any moment? From the way you look, I wouldn't say you're dying. Her husband's eyes were fixed on her. I even think that the more tired we are at work, the more strength you have. What kind of nonsense is that? Objected the wife. I don't understand why you're mad at me. I've been devoted to you all my life. I love you and have loved you. I gave birth to your son. What's wrong with that? I have a feeling you have something to tell me. Is the foreplay over? Alexander squinted his eyes. Alexander, his wife pressed against him, I have a feeling, she had no time to finish before her husband interrupted her, before you say anything, now I ask you to think carefully, he said angrily, because every word you say later will be directed against you. That's enough, Zoe was offended. We're in trouble, a tragedy you might say, and you, she looked the other way, all right, talk, he softened, what did you recognize or see there? I'm ready to hear you out. Zoe instantly turned to him and, staring intently into his eyes, began to whisper something. Speak up, I don't understand anything, the husband cursed. Zoe, what's the matter? Are our enemies eavesdropping on us? Maybe, she said cryptically, maybe she's standing outside the door listening. Who is she? Alexander jumped up, are you going to drive me crazy? What the hell is this? Lana has a lover, the wife finally made up her mind. Alexander, I can feel it. Okay, the husband got out of bed, please leave my territory. I don't even want to listen to this nonsense. That's it, get out with your things, he ordered her. It's true, you're the reason we're going to wait till it's too late. She'll destroy our family and drive Alex to suicide, the woman didn't stop. Her husband grabbed her by the arm and pushed her out the door. Zoe stood there for a moment, but she knew her husband too well. The conversation was over, he wouldn't listen to her anymore. What am I going to do, she pondered, lying in bed. It's impossible to count on this grip. 
I didn't give him that nickname for nothing, she laughed. Well, you'll be sorry for what you said today. Zoe reached into her nightstand and pulled out a bag of chocolates. She felt better after 10, so here's the plan. I'm going to follow Lana and get evidence that she has a man. I'm sure she's hanging out with some students, dad, at night, and Alex is a fool, working in his office, screwing up his eyes with his projects. Zoe's biggest problem was that she was alone. She didn't have any friends, though she talked to Katie, but she was a gossip. Still, she didn't want to confide such secrets to her. So what? I can handle it, she told someone. They believe me somehow that I have diabetes of the last degree and I'm going to die, so they'll believe Lana too. It was almost two o'clock when Zoe realized she was insanely hungry. The sweets made her hunger even worse. The woman cautiously crept into the kitchen. Okay, what do we have here? Sausage, cheese, some salads, she set the dishes on the table. Zoe was savoring her sandwich when the kitchen light came on. Her son, who had come in for a drink, looked at her in bewilderment. Mom, what are you doing? He looked at her in horror as she stuffed the rest of the sausage into her mouth. Son, so much nausea, I decided to eat something by force, with her mouth full, she tried to say. Why did you eat in the dark? He scratched his head. Alex knew that his mother was sometimes strange, so he didn't pay much attention to it. The next morning, everyone went to work, and Zoe ran around the house like a meteor. First, she snuck into her son's room, turned everything upside down, but found no evidence. Then she went into her husband's room. He could have just been covering the door, so there's no evidence at home, she sighed. All right, I'll try to catch her somewhere, but where and how? Even though Zoe wasn't doing anything around the house right now, her husband had ordered her a month ago to at least cook and clean at least once a week. Alexander, you know I'm seriously ill, and anyway, we have a daughter-in-law, Zoe objected immediately. Let Lana cook and clean, no, you do that, do you understand me? Her husband looked at her sternly. Otherwise, I'll throw you out on the street. Alexander came to such a rage that the wife realized it is better not to oppose him. Still, she managed to snatch for herself a few bonuses. First, she cooked every other day, and secondly, cleaned only in her room and her husband's. And since the house had three large rooms, a hall, and a kitchen, Lana did the rest on weekends. Zoe's brain was boiling so much that she couldn't do without sweets. She pulled chocolate-covered waffles and marmalade out of the refrigerator and ate it all with great gusto. God, it felt good. She lay on the couch in the hall with her belly up. How I like my life. She watched TV, but no matter how much she wanted not to think about unpleasant things, today it was her turn to cook, so she went back to the kitchen. Well, I'll make you a delicacy. She laughed loudly and went for the peas. Tonight, there will be artillery. Her mother-in-law knew that Lana didn't eat pea soup, but that didn't store the main thing, that Alex at night inadvertently could make the appropriate sounds and flavors. The phone rang. It was her husband. She swore and, coughing, picked up the phone. Yes, darling, she said in a tired voice. Is something wrong? Oh, I'm not strong at all. I'm trying to cook something. That's why I called you, Alexander sighed. I wanted to ask you to make pancakes for tonight. Oh, no way, immediately answered the wife. Yes, I will fall at the stove. I would like to finish cooking the soup. The husband dryly said goodbye and disconnected the phone. She cast an angry glance at the peas. He needs pancakes? Yeah, no way. Well, if only with mushrooms, she laughed rangily. Alexander went back to the car, but his wife was in his mind all the time. He was so exhausted, for the last two years, he only dreamed of one thing, that his son would buy his own apartment, and when he and Lana moved out, he'd divorce his wife. She'd become unbearable. He could have done it now, but he had to split the house, and the kids had nowhere to live, so he put up with his Zoe. What a snaky, he thought, and I was lucky enough to marry such a creature. Well, nothing takes her. Alexander did not know about everything, but was aware of many things. Once he noticed how wife hid candy under the bed, how she ran to the kitchen at night to eat, but for all she had no appetite. He was even aware of the fact that Zoe was not sick. 
A few months ago, the man couldn't stand it and went to the clinic. Yes, she has a predisposition to diabetes, but she is not sick yet, the attending physician replied. She just needs to be on a diet. Well, she's in no danger of that, he said with annoyance in his voice. My wife can't live without sweets. For her, it's like drugs or alcohol. She'd never give up chocolate. The doctor shrugged his shoulders. He had said all he could. The rest was up to the patient to decide, because he had warned her. Alexander wanted to take out a loan to help the children, but he was refused, so he had only one choice, wait. Zoe finished her meal and lay back on the couch. She started thinking about how she could sneak into the institute unnoticed and follow Lana. She jumped up and went to the mirror, examining herself from every angle. Should I change into an old woman? Someone asked her and quickly put a scarf on her head. Yes, a real ugly woman, or maybe by a wig, an interesting thought crossed her mind. Zoe quickly rushed to her safe, took out a ceramic sugar bowl from the nightstand, and counted the money. And that's while I'm still saving money, she sighed. Well, I'll have to splurge, otherwise how can I prove that she has a lover? She put a small amount of money in her purse and went downtown. She had a rough idea of where she could find the necessary paraphernalia for surveillance. For today, Zoe planned to prepare for her operation, which she wanted to start tomorrow. Oh my god, she jumped in horror when she saw herself in the mirror, wearing a black wig like a female vampire. It's okay, but no one will recognize me like this, she went home and went back to her new look. So what? She was wearing a long colorful skirt that was out of season but would do for a few occasions, a black wig from under which dangled the gaudy long earrings she had once bought in revenge on her husband. He'd scolded her for always buying trinkets and not wearing them, a bright lipstick brand and a color the woman herself detested, an old bag with torn handles, but well, nothing, so even my greb wouldn't recognize me, she laughed and glanced at her watch, and turned pale. In half an hour, her husband was to arrive. The woman quickly changed her clothes and hid her suit. Alexander had already called her and told her that he would be home soon. She was in such a good mood from her scheme that she even forgot to play out her role. But I see you're already feeling well, instead of greeting her, her husband said to her. Did the pancakes, or rather the reluctance to bake them, so raise your spirits? Not to be happy for your wife, she grumbled unhappily and went to the kitchen. Well, can I meet you from time to time as a wife? And the rest of the time, who meets me? I can even guess, a witch, he looked intently into her eyes. Very funny, Zoe threw angrily. Are you going to eat or are you going to wait for them? Well, I say witch, he sighed. Our children don't even have names for you, they is the word people like you use to call children. That's enough. Are you getting back at me for your pancakes? Alright, I'm going to go on principle and bake you a whole stack. I don't want you to choke. The wife was pointing her finger at her husband with cottage cheese. Please, and ham, he answered her and went to his room. You know, you have to earn pocket money too. She angrily put the batter on the pancakes and began to fill them. Sparks flew out of her eyes. Idiot, she scolded. You expect me to leave you? Who needs you but me? Zoe had already put the question several times, but for some reason, Alexander was not frightened by her threats to leave home. So, somewhere inside, she felt that she could not blackmail him with this. But nevertheless, to calm the woman's soul, such threats brought relief. The aroma of pancakes wafted throughout the house. Alexander was very pleased. In general, Zoe was not a bad cook. If it weren't for her quirks, she could make a good hostess. In the first years of her marriage, she even had zeal. Zoe would go around the house with a rag and a broom. Not a single speck of dust on the floor and not a speck of dust on the furniture and window sills. Zoe, stop going crazy, her husband kept telling her. You can't clean once and for all, dirt and dust gather again. It's inevitable. But his wife was not convinced by his words, and she, like a maniac, chased the poor victims in the form of thread and some small papers. And when Alex was a newborn, she went crazy. Zoe, but why do you wipe your hands with alcohol every five minutes? 
Alexander wondered. First of all, he had already developed an immunity. Second, L, you'll wipe your hands that way. But she was too stubborn and stoppy. It was impossible to change her mind. There was a knock on the gate. Alex came home from work. He tiredly entered the house and went into the kitchen. Mom, he looked at her in surprise. What are you doing? He wiggled his nose. Pancakes, she answered grudgingly, at your father's. She deliberately turned up the volume. No conscience, he made a sick man stand at the stove, she grumbled. I see, the son sighed and went to his room. He realized that nothing had changed, so his fleeting joy quickly disappeared from his face. Zoe was very nervous. She had to get everything done before her daughter-in-law arrived because no one had canceled the duty at the post. She quickly finished the last pancake and shouted that she went to the neighbor. I don't understand. Do you decide the fate of the earth every night? Jumped out of his room, her husband. But it was too late. Zoe had already gone out. It was getting dark. She crept to her vantage point and waited. This time she was in luck. Lana had gotten a ride that day from a stranger. He didn't look like a cab driver, and there she was, satisfied. Mother-in-law rubbed her hands. Well, my fears were justified. Now we'll see who's who. Zoe returned when dinner was in full swing. Her husband cursed at first, but then invited her to the table. Where's Lana? She asked in surprise. Had she already eaten? She had a bad feeling. Yes, her parents fed her dinner tonight, the son answered. It's his father's birthday. Oh, that's it, a hundred different images flashed through Zoe's mind. The boy is being raised by a single father, and naturally, since he has a relationship with her son, he asked her to stay over. There must have been wine or champagne, and then she said she had to go home, and the student father volunteered to give her a ride. And on the way, they... Mom, do you want soup? Alex's voice came to her. You're getting back at us for something. You made pea soup. He was trying to make a joke. Oh no, she came to her senses. I have no appetite today either, she said in a weak voice. Oh yeah, I couldn't help myself. Alexander, have you had too much chocolate today? His wife didn't answer him. She urgently needed to be alone and think about what she had just heard. So, her lover was her student father after all, Zoe wondered. Well, his car is expensive, there's nothing to say about that. In fact, in the darkness, she couldn't see the driver's car, but that didn't bother her. She wanted him to be a wealthy man. It was easier to prove that the daughter-in-law had a lover. Tomorrow, I'll follow her, she ordered herself and quietly took out of the nightstand the expensive candy she had bought today. She liked expensive candy, she couldn't deny herself that. But sometimes she was in a state of a ITY, her husband sometimes wouldn't give her any money. She was so annoying, he didn't know how to deal with her any other way. God, these taste so good, I could eat kilos of them, she closed her eyes in delight. My favorite, with nuts. Suddenly, someone knocked. Zoe choked and barely said to wait. She had been cubbing the whole time. When her husband came into the room, what's the matter with you? He asked worriedly. Have you started smoking? He couldn't understand what the smell in the bedroom was. Was what a fool, she threw it to him. Do you even want me dead? What did you want? I'm going to bed to talk. Her husband sat down tiredly on her bed. Zoe, why don't you cut the crap? Go to work. I want to collect money and give it to my kids so they can buy a house. I can't do anything with you around my neck. You're crazy. She turned pale. Do you want me to fall somewhere and die? That's enough. I've been to your doctor. You don't have diabetes or anything else. You're perfectly healthy. He couldn't take it anymore and told her the truth. Zoe was silent for a while. Her brain was processing information at the speed of light. He lied to you. She sat down next to Alexander. I asked him to, I didn't want to tell you, but my condition is even worse than I told you. I'm living out my last months, tearfully, I asked my doctor to lie to you, you have a weak heart that can't take it. What makes you think that? Her husband looked at her in surprise. 
There's nothing wrong with my heart. I recently had an ultrasound. But it's not every day they tell you that your wife is only a few weeks left. Anyone can have a heart attack. Zoe, I can honestly tell you there's only one problem for me. I still can't tell when you're telling the truth and when you're lying. Alexander got up and walked out of his wife's bedroom in a depressed state. This, this woman will definitely drive me crazy, he whispered under his breath. Either she's an idiot or I'm an idiot. Phew, that's all right. Zoe lay down on the bed. What an asshole. Why did he go to my doctor? I should be more careful, but it's okay. Once I expose Lana, he'll realize he has to trust me. Zoe slept sweet that night. Now she had all the tools she needed to defame Lana. To everyone's surprise, Alex's mother was up and about the next morning. She tried to smile sweetly at breakfast, decided I needed to spend more time with you. How much longer do I have left? She said suddenly, sitting down at the table. Her husband looked at her in amazement, but Zoe paid no attention. She walked everyone to work. Three hours later, she changed into her new look and went into town. She had to make sure no one could recognize her. What do you want? The salesman she bought candy from all the time asked her angrily. If you don't want anything, go away. There's no point in hanging around here. Zoe satisfied, left. Her acquaintance's demeanor suggested he didn't recognize her. She decided to wander around the market. Suddenly, she felt someone's eyes on her. She turned around. A strange man was standing next to her, staring at her. Hi, he smiled. What's up, baby? He came closer to Zoe. Zoe was shocked. She started walking away, looking back all the time. She felt like the stranger was following her. God, I must look like a sellout, she cursed in her thoughts. Zoe quickened her pace to get out of the market, but right at the exit, her feet caught on her long skirt. She fell. Are you all right, a man? S voice was heard above her head. She fixed the wig that had fallen down over her eyes and smiled sweetly. No, unfortunately, I'm seriously ill. I get dizzy all the time, so I fall down a lot. She wanted to justify herself. But that's not a problem. I'll help you, the stranger winked at her. Come on, I'll take you. You bitch, I'll show you, and she ran in the direction her daughter-in-law and the stranger had gone. But they must have already left. I knew she was cheating on him, sadly thought mother-in-law. After all, I did not like her right away. It's written all over her face that she's unreliable. Zoe took out her phone and wanted to call her husband, but stopped herself. She only managed to take one picture of Lana standing next to a stranger. She chastised herself for not capturing the most important moment when he gave her flowers. No, I'll talk to him on the spot. He won't believe me, and I don't want to send him the photo yet either, she decided. It was getting late, and Zoe needed to finish this masquerade and go home. But first, she decided to go to the mall. She decided to cheer herself up, and while she ate her chocolate, she was going to go up to the third floor and look for some clothes. But the elevator got stuck. The strangest part was that Zoe was riding it up alone. It just stopped between the second and third floor. Please, save me, through tears, she shouted, pressing the button. The elevator is stuck. Get me out of here. She was informed that the elevator would be fixed soon. Zoe had no idea how afraid she was of confined spaces. She looked at herself in the mirror and couldn't realize who was standing in front of her. All because of that Lana. She tried to come to her senses. If she hadn't cheated on my son, I wouldn't be here. And then her phone rang and her husband's number came up. She cursed. Zoe, are you home? He asked calmly. The wife was silent. She wanted to find some answer, but her brain was so paralyzed with fear that she understood nothing. No, finally she said. Maybe I'll be there in an hour. She wanted so badly to tell her husband everything, everything. But she had to keep her temper in check. She turned off the phone and cried for the first time in years. She really wanted her husband to be with her. 
Zoe felt so defenseless that she even wanted to scream. For almost half an hour, the captive was stuck in the stuck elevator. During that time, she called the dispatcher probably 20 times, if not more. Very angry, she went downstairs and wandered toward the bus stop. When she got home, dinner was already finished, yet her son and his wife had gone to their room, and her husband was in the kitchen. Oh my God, he said in horror when his wife entered the house. Her whole face was smeared. She was holding some hair in her hands. Alexander took a closer look and realized that it was a wig. Have you been hired to work in a horror theater? He said and looked at Zoe. Or did they exercise demons from you? The latter would be nice. He could hardly contain his laughter. No, I was rehearsing my funeral, she answered angrily and sat down at the table. Are you going to die in this? He pointed at her fastened skirt. You'll scare the dead away in that. It's not funny, she threw it angrily. Do we have anything sweet? I'm going to go crazy. Oh, but I certainly won't believe that you're out of candy, Alexander made a joke. Zoe, where have you been? What happened? I'll tell you tomorrow, she didn't wait for tea and went to her room. She closed the door behind her so no one would disturb her. She went to her nightstand and took out her bag. There were only three pieces of candy in it. They didn't save her, and she went to bed angry. About 20 minutes later, the door to her room opened. Zoe didn't turn around. Her husband looked at her for a few minutes, then sighed and went to his room. What's going on with her, he thought. Maybe her hormones are messing with her head. She doesn't even see from the outside how stupid she looks. Alexander was both angry at his wife and felt pity for her. At her core, Zoe wasn't that bad, but how to get through to her, and was it possible? He didn't understand. Zoe was completely pissed off. She wasn't even relieved that she had caught her daughter-in-law with her lover today. As she stood there in the elevator alone, she too looked at herself and wondered what was happening to her. Zoe realized she looked like a fool, and she shouldn't have interfered in her son's life in the first place. But it was as if some worm was undermining her from the inside. Its magnetic pull kept her from coming to her senses. Sometimes, Zoe didn't realize where she was and where the monster was, the lines were so blurred. The woman felt disgusted with herself, it was terrifying her. She was already used to her role as a bitch and didn't know what she could really be. It was one of the most difficult nights of her life. In the morning, her husband looked in on her. She was still lying there with her back turned to the wall. He didn't bother to wake her up and drove to work. Zoe walked into the kitchen. Nothing pleased her. She decided to tidy up and prepare herself for a huge relationship scandal. But once again, doubt rose up inside her. Okay, I have to pull myself together. She sternly ordered herself. Do I not want my son to be happy? Let justice prevail and the guilty be punished. Zoe realized she needed a dope. She opened the fridge and, to her great surprise, found a cake. Yes, it was half eaten. What's with the celebration? The woman said contentedly, pulling out the dessert. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Stop. She immediately restrained herself. What if Lana's lover gave it to her yesterday? But five minutes later, Zoe was already shoveling cake into her mouth with a big spoon. But let me tell you, Lana's lover has good taste. She tried to shove the rest of it down her throat. Okay, I'll finish it later. She hiccuped and went back to her room in a good mood. She took her phone and scrutinized the photo she had taken yesterday. So what proof do I have? She reasoned. First of all, the man is smiling at her. What does that tell you? That they know each other well. Then there's the flowers. The bouquet is fancy, so it's expensive. And who does he give these bouquets to? That's right, only lovers. I've only gotten a few roses like that from my grease ball. In fact, it could be his thanks for last night. Did he bring her home so late for nothing? Now let's look at Lana. Well, at first glance, you can see that she's happy and how she's dressed, high-heeled boots, dressed below the knees. I don't even know what Alex is looking at. Does she work at the college or something? 
How can you dress like that around kids? It's because he didn't control her that she got away from him, and that fool is just like his father. Zoe remembered that today was her day. Lana had cooked dinner last night. She reluctantly wandered back into the kitchen. So what should they make this time? She looked in the cabinet. Right, I'll make the millet tonight. Lana doesn't like millet either, so she'll be on a diet today. The woman satisfied poured boiling water over it and started rummaging through the fridge. In general, she knew that if you cook millet with meat correctly, it can be very tasty. Okay, I won't make it with vegetables. She did someone a favor. Let it be millet, she laughed. The hostess took out a decent piece of meat. Zoe was so engrossed in her chores that she didn't even notice that in addition to the pilaf, there were two salads on the table and the dough for the air buns was puffing up in the bowl. Oh, what is it with me? She came to her senses. Am I crazy? She jabbed her finger at the dough. All right, let her enjoy it before she's executed, Zoe laughed. It's uncomfortable to swear on an empty stomach. An hour later, vanilla and cinnamon replaced the aromas of spices and roasted meat. Zoe barely waited for the first batch to cool before savoring the sweets. Delicious, she licked at her fingers and put the next batch in the oven. So addictive, she was really enjoying all the fuss. Suddenly, the phone rang in the kitchen. That's how a grease ball can ruin the mood, she cursed and pressed accept the call. Yes, Alexander, well... So, so, cheerfulness immediately left her voice. Will you be late tonight? We need to have a serious talk. Yes, I'll be patient until 9 o'clock, the wife replied unhappily and hung up. H.E.K. ruined everything for me again, Zoe barely finished the remaining buns and went to her room. She had also planned how to embarrass her daughter-in-law at the family dinner, show everyone proof of her cheating. The woman was very angry. She ate a couple more buns, but it didn't make her feel any better. She knew that the mood she was in now was bound to turn into a scandal. Her nostrils flared, sparks flew from her eyes. She decided that she would spend time at her neighbor's house until her husband arrived, especially since the woman hadn't visited her for a long time. Zoe was lying in her bed when she heard a noise. She looked out the open door. Her son had come home from work. Oh, how she wanted to fight with him, but she realized that the protagonist of the case had not yet arrived. Alex locked himself in his room. It was getting close to the weekend. Friday was going to be really hard. So, I won't wait for my husband. I'll start on my own, Zoe was thinking. What could I do to avoid revealing my main trump cards? Zoe sneaked into the bathroom and threw a pile of clothes in there. They had a special basket for that. Her mother-in-law knew that Lana would definitely be doing laundry today. For about an hour, the woman was in her hiding place. Voices were heard in the hallway. That meant that Lana had returned from work as well. Another 40 minutes passed, and the mother-in-law entered the kitchen. Her daughter-in-law was setting the table. Good evening, Mrs. Zoe. She smiled welcomingly. Thank you for dinner. You've cooked so much tonight. I did my best for you, she said gloatingly. Lana looked back at her. Her mother-in-law was standing in the doorway, arms crossed over her chest. Lana gave her a puzzled look. Unfortunately, no one in our house appreciates that. She fixed her eyes on the girl. Why do you think so immediately? Lana's tone changed. We are very grateful to you. Yeah, Zoe laughed. You should only demand something from me. What about you? What's this meeting about? The sun came up to them, sensing something wrong. What are we discussing about your negligent wife? His mother answered him. I've been cooking all day so you could have a nice meal tonight, and Lana couldn't even throw my clothes in the washing machine. She already has her own laundry hanging to dry. Lana went pale. She knew she could expect anything from Zoe, but tonight she'd struck what she called a low blow. I'm sorry. But if it was that important to you, you could have asked me, she tried to strike a delicate balance. So the fact that my dirty clothes were in the basket didn't convince you? My mother-in-law wouldn't give up. Mom, I don't think that's appropriate. My son stood up for his wife. Besides, you yourself wouldn't find it difficult to throw your clothes in the machine. You were home all day, 
and Lana was working. I know how she works, my mom's on a roll, you should have seen who she was leaving college with. Of course, there's a rich guy there, not unlike you. What the hell are you talking about, the daughter-in-law went crazy. You're going sile, even in this, you decided to beat the others. He came to you earlier, how are you talking to me? Zoe opened her mouth. You'll never tell Alex that you hugged a man, he's a fool to believe you. You know what? Lana ran out of the kitchen and into the bathroom, grabbed the basket with her mother-in-law's clothes, and brought it into the kitchen, then abruptly opened the window and threw everything out. You idiot, my mother-in-law boiled over like hot lava. Get out of my house. The gate opened, Alexander entered the yard, saw the open window in the kitchen, heard his wife swearing, and rushed into the house. What's going on here? He tried to calm his wife and daughter-in-law. That thing is walking away from our son, shouted Zoe throughout the house. I saw it with my own eyes. He gave her a big bouquet of red roses. She doesn't go to any students after work but rides around with her man. With trembling hands, the woman took her phone and showed everyone the picture. Alex looked at his mother in horror, then ran out of the kitchen and disappeared somewhere. A few minutes later, he returned with a large vase. Here they are, he shouted to his mother. We purposely did not put them in the kitchen so that you did not get on anyone's nerves, but you found a way out here too, didn't you? Know that yesterday was teacher day, the father of the boy Lana's tutoring always picks her up from college and takes her to his house. He gave her special flowers and a cake. By the way, someone ate it without remorse. He opened the refrigerator to show his mother, but there wasn't even a box left. That's a lie, she wouldn't give up. You should have seen the way he looked at her, she was making eyes at him too. You're a complete moron. Well, that's it, Alexander intervened. I'll give you an hour to pack your things. He tried to keep himself in control. And after that, you don't set foot in our house. Do you understand me? He looked at his wife. Okay, Zoe, my patience is wearing thin. What? You're kicking me out, she was furious. This is my house, I have every right to live here. Get out of here, the husband shouted at the top of his voice. In a month, I'll pay you your share in cash, and I warn you not to set foot in our house again, you bitch scum. Zoe waved her fists. But you'll see, so they're in cahoots, huh? You've decided to kill me, a sick man, she shouted vile words, words for a long time, but after an hour, in order not to annoy her husband, went out. At parting, he threw a large sum of money on the table so that she could rent a place to live. For the first time, I don't want anything from you, she shouted loudly and went to the table where the money was lying. She quickly grabbed it and put it in her pocket. Alexander realized that she had left and went into the kitchen. He saw the empty table and smiled. Jesus, why shake the with words if you are not capable of anything? He cursed and went back to his room. Alex comforted his wife. Lana was in a lot of pain. She worked all the time and also did things at home, and her mother-in-law accused her of being so mean. Alex went to get water, looked out the window. His mother's things were still lying in the yard. He shrugged his shoulders, sighed, and what does she lack in life, he thought. After all, she has everything, but do something, but no, work is boring, better to spit at the ceiling and decide other people's fates. And Zoe knocked on her neighbor's gate, Katie was surprised to see her with a big bag. Zoe, Zoe, what's wrong, she came running out. Did your husband kick you out of the house, she opened her mouth at the news. Yeah, Hume's going to kick me out. Zoe said angrily. I left him myself, Caddy, I can't live with such a monster anymore. As they drank tea, Zoe told her friend her version of what had happened. So if he's so furious with you, maybe he has a mistress, immediately offered Katie her opinion. You cook and clean for them all day long, and you're sick, how can you not appreciate your wife? I do not even know how he has the conscience to talk about it, the guest sobbed. Katie, how could you call me lazy? Zoe listened. Maybe your daughter-in-law has her eye on your house. Oh, Katie, I don't know what they're up to except, except I'm the one who's going to have to suffer. 
Now Zoe, howled, I had to leave my home because I couldn't stand living there anymore. Where will you go? Sighed her friend. You have no place to live. You buried your parents. I will rent a place for now, Zoe answered with annoyance in her voice. You know, Caddy, I don't have long to live, so I'm going to die soon. She hugged her neighbor, and together they cried. Zoe spent the night at Katie's house and left early in the morning. She managed to make some more money out of her grief. Her friend had slipped a few bills into her pocket. Now the woman's path lay to the city center. She needed to buy a couple of newspapers with ads. While Zoe's anger boiled inside, she was sure she would have to take revenge on her loved ones. Why, she dreamed, maybe I'll marry an oligarch, then we'll see how you'll sing. Images swam before Zoya's eyes. Here she is in an expensive wedding dress, walking with her fiancé, a man in a white cheek suit looking at her lovingly. And then she suddenly found herself in a magnificent mansion, and the servants are running around her, bringing her the most exquisite desserts, real chocolate, and of course, her favorite candies with nuts. Hello for the umpteenth time, someone said in the receiver. What do you want? I'm listening, a Zoe had come to her senses. It's about the apartment, she remembered. Who will be staying? A family or a single person? Any children? Pets? The woman could not immediately grasp the meaning of her words. She was still sitting in the fancy chair, and the servants were running around her. Do you need an apartment or not? scolded the landlady. Why are you calling? I do, Zoe finally came to her senses. For one person. I'm a woman without children or animals. Can I come and see it? Zoe looked at the shabby walls, looked into the bathroom, and immediately jumped out. The apartment is a wreck, she said with annoyance in her voice. I didn't think it was possible to rent in such a state. Only if you want to renovate, the price will be two or three times higher, unhappily replied the landlady. It's up to you. If you don't want it, don't rent it. All right, Zoe agreed, remembering that she didn't have much money. The landlady left, and Zoe sat down on the old sofa and cried. After her comfortable home, this new apartment was a mess. It's okay. I'm only here for a month. He'll come running to me, begging me to come back. She took out her cell phone and changed her husband's name back to Greaseball. You don't deserve any better, she whispered angrily. How much I hate you and all of you, Alex was a traitor. Zoe lay back on the couch, its spring sticking almost to the surface told her that she was going to have a hard time here. The rest of the day, the woman lay on the couch until she had a strong appetite. She went to the kitchen and looked in the cupboards with the doors half torn off. God, I wonder who else lives here, she looked at the filth and horror. Mice and cockroaches will be my roommates. When she opened the refrigerator, it smelled so bad that she closed it immediately. So I'll have to live without a refrigerator, she sighed. I won't be able to put anything in it. She cast a contemptuous glance in the direction of the pensioner. She decided to go to the store. Her hands were already shaking. She needed to eat something sweet. The woman had deliberately rented an apartment on the other side of town so no one could see her. Here, almost a week passed, and Zoe's enthusiasm waned. All day long, she just lay there and did nothing, but when she went to the store, she noticed how quickly her cash reserves were draining away. But for some reason, they didn't ring. She looked at the phone. Had they lost their conscience? I'm living in such hell here, and they are enjoying themselves in a comfortable house. The whole day, the woman looked at the phone, but neither her son nor her husband were interested in what was happening to her. Zoe got nervous. What if he did file for divorce? Suddenly, a thought occurred to her. What would I do then with the money he'd give me for the house? I couldn't buy anything, and it's a nice house. I don't want it. Tears sprang from her eyes. She glanced at the big pile of candy wrappers, she ate another one and picked up the phone. For a moment, Zoe wanted to call her husband, but stopped herself. No way, she thought angrily. Let him apologize to me, and I won't go back to him. And anyway, I need to clean myself up and meet someone. Zoe grabbed the few newspapers she'd bought yesterday, just in case. Okay, 
dating, she started looking for a suitable ad. Uh-huh, here it is, a man without bad habits is looking for a decent woman for a serious relationship. Please do not bother frivolous ladies. Only a rich man would write such an ad, Zoe decided. She practiced a little and dialed the number. She liked Nicola's voice, and judging by the conversation, he was an educated man. Zoe rubbed her hands together, satisfied. Nicola had made a date with her for 8 o'clock. Oh, here we go. You think nobody wants me? You're the one who never appreciated me. As soon as you find out that I married a wealthy man, you will bite your elbows. She was happy. Zoe had been pacing around the old leather mirror for almost an hour now. She thought she looked pretty good. She sucked in her belly and felt like a queen. She was a little worried. The reason was that her inner voice was urging her to stay home. No way, she ordered the voice. I know what I'm going to do on my own. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. I'm not going to have that greaseball in my life anymore. Zoe's bow was already sitting at a table near the window. Zoe liked the man. He was 57, so he still had plenty of energy. The woman glanced at his suit. It didn't look like much, but Zoe could see why. He just doesn't want to embarrass me with his wealth, she thought. He wanted to see if I'd fall for him or his money. What a trickster. All right, let's play, she smiled. Nicola really did talk a good game. He had grand plans for his life. Now, I'd like to sell my poultry farm, he sighed. Zoe, you don't know how tired I am. That's why I want to leave everything and with my beloved woman to travel the world, to rest in the best resorts. To tell the truth, I would very much like you to be my chosen woman. Zoe was embarrassed. It was her triumph. Nicola made the order himself, chose not cheap dishes. They also brought expensive wine. He touched his glass to Zoe. Zoe, you're my dream. She was showered with compliments. She was proving to everyone that she was worth something. A thought flashed through her mind. She wished her husband was sitting at the next table. He'd go crazy, she laughed at her thoughts. Idiot. You'll find out more about me. For almost an hour and a half, the new acquaintances talked excitedly. Nicola amazed Zoe with new and new facets. What a man, Zoe marveled. Yes, I'm not going to get caught with such a man. My dear lady, Nicola stood up and kissed her hand. Let me go to a very important place for a few minutes. The woman smiled coyly, staring out the window. She had so many impressions that Zoe already felt herself in some expensive hotel. London, Paris, Tel Aviv, she stretched out sweetly. I'll tell Nicola right away to take us on a wedding trip. Zoe saw herself sitting on an expensive yacht, and her hands was a glass of champagne. At the helm stood Nikolai himself. The woman smiled at him and kept sending air kisses then walked around a luxurious garden in some mansion someone from the servants was holding a tray in his hand he smiled sweetly and held something out to her if you are finished i will ask you to pay suddenly she heard it and jumped up a waiter stood in front of zoe with a tray some kind of book on it your check please the young man smiled will you pay by credit card or cash zoe looked at him in horror couldn't you wait a little longer my man will be right back. Back from the restroom, and he'll pay for everything? I'm sorry, but he told us you'd be paying the bill. The waiter was still smiling radiantly. Me, the guest, said in a trembling voice. Her hand opened the folder, and she almost screamed, How much? That's right, your dishes were of the deluxe class. The guy confirmed it. So, how will you be paying? There's been some kind of mistake. Zoe was trying to prove something to him. The man invited me here and told me it was on him. I don't have that kind of money. I apologize, but I have to call the police, the waiter said calmly. I think they'll be able to find out what happened there. What do you mean, the police? Tears welled up in her eyes, but I really don't have that kind of money on me. All right, I'll make it up to you. You'll leave your passport as collateral and go get the money, he smiled sweetly. Zoe rushed home in a mad rage. They're all against me. What do they all want from me, bastards? 
They just want to send me to the other side of the world. Zoe had a sleepless night. It was the first time she'd felt fear for a long time. She was running out of money and had nowhere to go. She thought of her husband again. Tomorrow, I'll call him and see if he filed for divorce, she said to herself. Otherwise, I'll be on the street for sure. Zoe woke up late the next day. It was almost two o'clock. She remembered everything that had happened to her yesterday. She had to do something. Am I going to have to look for a job? She looked at herself in the mirror in horror. Where am I going to go? Somewhere inside, Zoe knew she would have to get a job, but she postponed this moment to the last. Instead of serious thoughts, the woman went to the store and bought sweets. How good it felt, she stroked her stomach, looking at the wrappers from the chocolates. One thing was clear, no more dating. This, of course, does not exclude that I will marry an oligarch, but let him find me. I won't take that risk again. I'm sure only scum and beggars like Nicola do that sort of thing. That day, Zoe didn't dare call her husband. She was desperate for him to do it himself. For two weeks now, she had been living in a rented apartment. Her finances had evaporated. The worst moment had arrived, and Zoe realized she couldn't avoid it. So, what have we got here? She read the advertisements unhappily, nurse needed. Teacher needed. She moved her eyes quickly down the lines, and everywhere with work experience. But if I've worked unofficially at the factory for almost 10 years, is it my fault? She decided to make one attempt. She found an ad for a cafe. How old are you? What kind of work experience do you have? Immediately, the man asked her, we have all kinds of positions. Zoe told him about herself. The man listened to her intently. Well, he said, we can offer you a position as a cleaner. We have both day jobs and shift work. As a cleaner? Are you out of your mind? She almost swore rudely, I have 10 years experience. I understand, but at your age, I cannot offer you to become a waitress. And for a manager or administrator, you have neither experience nor education, the man said. Fuck you. Zoe swore and disconnected the phone. You idiot. How can you offer me that? And for such a salary? Almost a month had passed since Alexander had kicked his wife out of the house. At first, he was very angry with her. Not only that she brought almost no benefit, but also frankly parasitized everyone. This story with Lana's lover finally convinced him that Zoe either had to change or let her take full responsibility for her life. Dad, why don't we call her? His son came up to him one day. I'm worried about her, Alex. If you want your mother to be a fool for the rest of her life, then call her, angrily replied the father. I know her too well. For some reason, your mother is sure that I should call her first. I mean, she's the one who caused the scandal, and we're supposed to feel guilty. That's not going to happen. The only way I'm going to talk to her is if she apologizes to Lana. And since the Zoe I know can't do that, she can live wherever she wants. I won't even care if she picks through trash cans. I'm done. Lana didn't want to hear about her mother-in-law either. That crap she made up last time was the limit for her, Al Al, I get it, she's your mother, his wife told him, but I fully support your father. If you want her to stay as crazy as she is, go after her. It'll only make things worse for everyone. Your mother needs to realize that the world doesn't revolve around her. There are people around her too, and no one owes her anything. I know that myself, especially after my father said she was never sick, he sighed. I want to help her, of course, but indulging her whims will never lead to anything good. Let's look at it this way, Lana suggested, it's been almost a month. Doesn't her heart ache for her son? I'm sure she does, but she considers it beneath her dignity to call you. I mean, from the beginning, she's putting you beneath her. On what grounds? Just because she gave birth to you, but then you're not a human being, you're an appendage who has to spend his life at her feet. Don't think I can't forgive your mother, but there must be a reason for it. First, she must admit her guilt, and my forgiveness will happen automatically. Alex hugged his wife. 
At that moment, he even envied himself. He had gotten a very sensible woman as his wife. His mother, compared to her, was some capricious five-year-old girl who didn't want to grow up. Alexander lay in his room and read, but the book did not go, and he put it aside. Where is this idiot, he thought. Well, she cannot live long without a family. I won't come to you first, and I won't even call you. But she knows about it and still tries to take by force, the man realized, you cannot give weakness. Otherwise, his wife will remain a person vain and arrogant. Lately, he saw clearly that this was his role, to give her a chance to get out of this old suit which Zoe had worn many years ago and still does not want to take off. She'd been wearing that bastard suit all her life, he cursed out loud, I don't care about anybody. I'm going to live by my own laws. That's what she spent her whole life preaching and trying to make me believe it's a good thing. What has Zoe been up to these past few years, substitution white on black, she said, it was good, but she muddied the white. At first, Alexander thought he could easily let his wife go, but very soon he felt that he is not interested in neither novels nor the creation of a new family. If Zoe changed, he would be happy, and if she never did, oh well, he'd just live on his own and help the kids. A few more days passed when Alex came running home from work with burning eyes. No one had come home yet, and he paced back and forth nervously. He didn't want to discuss this topic over the phone. Okay, I'm dreaming. I have to run to the store and buy something for such an event, he got ready quickly. Lana would be back in an hour, and his father wouldn't be back until then. The young man called a cab and went to the hypermarket. Unfortunately, only his father had the car, so, for now, the son and his wife saved all the money for housing. In fact, they themselves still did not know what they would buy an apartment or a private house. Lana wanted a private household, Alex didn't care. He came home with his bags full and quickly began to set the table. Lana and his father called, and they were to return home almost simultaneously. Wow! Alexander exclaimed, what's the occasion? He put a piece of sausage in his mouth, wanted to make a joke about Zoya, but refrained. My darlings, Alex raised his glass, let me tell you some very important news. He wiped the sweat from his face, in general, I am no longer an ordinary, but a leading landscape designer. I've been promoted. Wow. His wife clapped her hands, Alex, congratulations, yay. Lana drank juice from a glass. Lana, you can't be serious, he looked at her offended. Why don't you drink champagne? Because I also have news for you, laughed the girl, Dad, Alex, get ready for what? My husband couldn't understand. Are you going to be sent on a business trip? He stared at his wife in bewilderment. Well, you could say that, said Lana. She waited for the man to guess, but I'd call it maternity leave. Lana, Alex jumped up to her, are you pregnant? My sunshine, is it true? That's news. Alexander scratched his head, so we're going to have a new baby. The family had a wonderful time that evening. They went to bed late. Alexander couldn't sleep. He thought about Zoe. He really wanted her to be with them today, to sit at the table and hear with her own ears that she would have a grandson or granddaughter. I'd give anything to make her happy about that news, he sighed. Maybe then she would have a sense of love and care for her loved ones. The next day, as luck would have it, problem after problem came. Alexander sat in the workshop, his head was boiling, he was very tired. Besides, he needed to buy something, so he told the chief that he would leave for an hour. One car could not be repaired, they could not find spare parts, and now they had to make something up from improvised means. Such cases from time to time happened at work, but after last night's good evening, Alexander was not ready for it. The car went to the exit from the city. There was a huge center where you could buy everything. Alexander had already walked through several stores, but found nothing suitable. He walked near a large salon of plumbing. A glance slipped because there was something going on there, and from amazement Alexander almost shrieked. He saw a woman in overalls scrubbing the floor. Zoe. He opened his mouth in surprise. Oh my God, could it really be her? 
He didn't want her to see him, so he stepped aside and watched her. He had a strong desire to approach her, but he felt that it was not yet time. In great excitement, the man left the store. But judging by the fact that she had found a job, it meant that something had moved. He smiled. Let's see how this whole thing plays out, he returned to work in a good mood. For one thing, he was happy to see his wife. She was healthy, nothing bad had happened to her. Secondly, she was beginning to take responsibility for her life, and that was very important. In the evening, the man told his son and daughter-in-law about it. It's even hard to believe it, Alex was surprised. Mom is waving him up, these things are incompatible. Well, you know, when you're hungry, you can't agree to anything, Dad objected. Nothing, it's good for her, but she'll learn to appreciate other people's labor. She's just like a laborer, the son laughed. God, what did she miss at home? Adrenaline, Alexander smiled. She was bored with life, there is a lot of energy, so much chocolate. That's what she was doing, and she didn't want to work, so she had to dump the surplus on someone, yeah, Lana sighed. I wish it were different. Lana, you can't do things differently with someone like her. You've seen for yourself how many years we've been following her lead. So let the mop teach her now. She ate tea and sweets at work, and that was enough for her, but Zoe began to notice that she had developed an aversion to sweets and chocolate. She'd have tea with a few cookies. God, how did I eat kilos of candy before? She thought in horror. This is just crazy. She put a piece of chocolate in her mouth, but it was so sweet that she just couldn't eat it. It really struck Zoe. Her husband often laughed at her that if she died first, he would fill the coffin with candy. I don't want sweets, oh my god, what a blessing. A week later, Zoe felt much better. She wasn't as nervous as she used to be. I really was addicted to chocolate, she looked in horror at the candy aisles in the supermarket. With her craving for sweets gone, Zoe felt an appetite for the first time in her life for food she had never liked. This was especially true of fish. The woman had eaten herring, of course, but nothing beyond that. And here she had somehow made it home to fry a couple of bony carp. She also ate sauerkraut like crazy. Every day Zoe began to notice that her belly was gone and that she looked younger. She smiled at herself in the crooked mirror, and it seemed to her that another woman was standing in front of her. I wonder what Alexander would say, the question echoed painfully in my heart. I miss him so much. I would give anything to see him at least one eye. Zoe had the day off tomorrow, and she decided to carry out her plan. She felt brave. She imagined knocking on the gate, entering the house, and telling the children and her husband everything. Zoe hid near her house. Jack was barking. She was afraid the neighbors would come out, so she moved closer to her fence and peered into the yard. Her husband's car was parked there, which meant he was already back from work. Zoe looked at the house. The kitchen light was on. Apparently, the family was having dinner. Tears came to her eyes. She stood hesitantly by the gate, wanting to knock but not daring enough. Zoe turned and ran away from her house. God, it hurts so bad. My family is there, she sobbed. What if they don't forgive me? I won't survive that. She returned home in a terrible state. She was very annoyed with the old apartment. She couldn't breathe. She opened the window, and the fall air filled the room. Zoe collapsed on her couch. At that moment, she wanted to die. She was suffocated by shame and fear that no one wanted her, that her husband and son would never forgive her. Please forgive me, with anger in his voice, said father-in-law. After three weeks of running away, Zoe realized she couldn't go on like this. She needed a job. She didn't have enough money left to pay next month's rent. Where am I going to go, she sighed. They won't take me anywhere. She picked up the newspaper with vacancies again. The next day, she was invited to a bakery in a big store for an interview. Night shifts? The woman looked at the bakery director in horror. How can you work at night? Do you think they bake bread during the day? He laughed. We work at night so that people have something to eat during the day. 
Zoe realized this was not for her. She sat on a bench outside the building with no mood. It was already cold. The first snow was falling. Why did I do all this? She cried. I had everything. God, how could I have been so stupid? For the first time, the woman thought seriously about her life. Of course, she missed her son and her husband very much. Many times she stopped herself from calling either of them. She no longer felt like she was the important person she had seen herself as a month ago. What was going to happen now, she didn't understand. How am I supposed to go on living? I have nothing. I'm on the street. What if he really divorces me? Nobody needs me but him. What have I done? Zoe, all pale, arrived for her second interview. It was a big air artery to clean, but she agreed. The director promised to pay her every week, and that was very important to her right now. Zoe was saving money on everything. There was no more chocolate or candy on her table. Her tea had been accompanied by oatmeal and cookies for the past day. On her first day of work, the woman was very tired. She was lucky that the boys had invited her to tea several times. She collapsed on her old sofa, crying. Idiot, beating at the old springs with her fist. Why did I do all this? I mean, it's completely insane. My husband loved me, and Lana was good to me. I'm so lucky, and I'm a fool, Zoe cried all night. She was disgusted with herself. Selfishness has never been a good thing. It had played a cruel trick on me too, she whispered. I have to start over. I won't call Alexander because I'm sick and want him to save me. I want him to respect me, not feel sorry for me or my whims. I will change, she thought decisively. I'll become a normal woman, not the bitch I've been for so many years. A few days passed. Zoe had already gotten used to her new responsibilities. The guys treated her very well. Choking, she pleaded with someone. I promise that I will never behave like this again. I love you so much, Alexander, Alex, Lana. Forgive me, after crying enough, Zoe felt better. Now she could easily admit her guilt and apologize to her loved ones, but she had to overcome her fear. She had entered that stage when it seems that no one will forgive you, that your misdeeds look so terrible that they are equal to the most serious sins. It kept Zoe from calling her husband or coming home and telling him everything to his face. The next day, the woman walked aimlessly down the street. She needed to buy some food, so she headed for the store. Zoe's attention was drawn to a kiosk, and she bought a newspaper with an advertisement. Need a cleaner at an auto repair shop, with pale lips, Zoe read the address. Everything went black before her eyes. She leaned against the wall and tried to catch her breath. I will go to them, she said decisively and, with her bags, headed towards the bus stop. On trembling legs, Zoe got off the bus. She knew this place very well, she had once come here to visit her husband. Zoe closed her eyes and stood like that for a few minutes. Then she walked briskly into the building. Zoe, the husband, was stunned. What are you doing here? Cold sweat broke out on his face. He could hardly keep himself from rushing to her. I want to apply for a job with you, she barely spoke. The meeting was so exciting that Zoe thought she was about to faint. By whom? Alexander couldn't understand. He looked at his wife in amazement. A cleaning lady, she answered simply. I need a job, Alexander. Who can I turn to? He seemed to come to his senses, fidgeting. Everything that was happening was so unusual, it was more like a miracle. Zoe was talking to the director, and her husband kept his eyes on her. He had not expected that meeting Zoe would be such an important event for him. He had only dreamed of one thing at that time, to hold her in his arms. He wanted her to dissolve into his heart, in his hot embrace, and stay there forever. A mechanic distracted him, and he went to help him. He returned five minutes later, but Zoe was gone. Alexander ran to the director, and the latter informed him that he had Zoe in two days, she would be out on the job. That was news, his heart was pounding so hard he was afraid it would jump out. Zoe's heart was pounding frantically too. 
She came home in tears, everything was all mixed up inside. Both the happiness of seeing her husband and the mad fear that he would not forgive her anyway. The woman decided to go to work at the workshop the next day. Zoe told the workplace that she would be quitting. She has some very serious business that makes it impossible for her to stay. What if she tied up her tail? Zoe was getting ready for her new job. No, this sweater won't go with my jeans. She couldn't find the right outfit for her husband. I'd better get my bangs to the right. She was making herself up in front of the mirror. He used to like it so much when I did my ponytail like this and left my bangs like this. Zoe spritzed herself with the rest of the bottle her husband had recently given her for March 8th. She really loved the scent. There was almost nothing left, the woman sighed. I'll buy another one with my first paycheck. Finally, Zoe left the house. She was flying from the upcoming meeting. Alexander had already spent half an hour in front of the mirror. He'd already changed his third outfit. What's the matter? He was cursing. Nothing goes with these pants. He realized that he still had to change clothes, but he really wanted to meet his wife like this. Dad, are you still home? Alex came to see him. Oh, did you have an important meeting? He laughed, seeing his father carefully combing his hair. Yes, we have to go to an office today. He didn't want to tell Alex about his mother yet. So the chief said there was a dress code. Alexander reached for a small box Zoe had given him this toilet water once, but he hardly ever used it. It was kind of nice. Okay, got to get ready. I got to get there before she does. He fussed and ran out into the yard. Alexander on the way thought about how he should start the upcoming conversation. He was very nervous, and in general, he felt as if he had fallen in love with his wife again. At least he had felt the same way when he first met Zoe. He ran into the workshop, looking around, Zoe wasn't there yet. He decided not to change for now. Other workers began to assemble, and to his dismay, ten minutes before the opening, a broken trough, which they called a car for some reason, rolled in. There was nothing to do, and Alexander had to get to work, he didn't even notice when his wife arrived. He kept tinkering with the old car. Zoe looked at him and smiled happily. This is my happiness, she thought. I don't need any oligarchs. I love him. At lunchtime, Zoe cautiously approached her husband, looked intently into his eyes. Alex, Alexander, I'm sorry for everything. I was a complete fool. I love you, she said. All this time, I have missed you very much, all of you, Alex, and you, and Lana. I don't want to live the life I used to live. Come here. Alexander hugged her. I can't do this without you. Do you realize that, stupid? We need you very much. None of us want you to live apart from us. God, I love you so much. He couldn't stand it any longer and kissed his wife. It's coming, shouted Alex. Mom, Dad, let's hurry up. He ran to the car where his parents were sitting. Lana's coming. Alexander and Zoe ran outside and stood near the gates of the maternity hospital. Lana's smile was visible from afar. She was just glowing with happiness. My darling, Alex ran up to her with flowers. My God, how small she is. He took his daughter in his arms. Lana, congratulations, her father-in-law and mother-in-law began to hug her. They both gave her two bouquets. Mom, Dad, thank you. Her daughter-in-law could barely hold the flowers in her hands. You have no idea how much I want to go home. Everyone got into the car. Alexander was professionally turning the steering wheel. They laughed merrily in the cabin. After Zoe returned home, an important decision was made at the family council. Three houses away from them, a small apartment of two rooms and a spacious kitchen was for sale, so Alex wanted to buy it so he wouldn't have to move far away from his parents. And here's what I suggest, Alex's mother smiled enigmatically. Alex, Lana, you will stay in our house, and Alexander, and I will move there. That way, I'll be able to help you with the baby, and I'll have time to do everything at home. Besides, I'm a working man now, I won't have enough energy for such a big house. That's what they decided. Zoe and her husband moved into a neighbor's house. She continued to clean the machine shop, 
Her husband tried to talk her out of it at first, but she insisted. Now you and I can at least save money for the resort. I don't eat chocolate anymore, Zoe laughed. For so many years, at least once, we'll go to the sea. Alexander came up and hugged his wife. How happy he was next to her, the woman he had dreamed of all his life. Yes, she was hidden under a thick layer of all these chocolate wrappers and ego, but he had the strength and patience to chop off all the heads of that terrible dragon that sat in his wife. Zoe, you're my miracle, he kissed his wife. God, how good it is to live, and even better to live with a woman you love. Thank you for joining us today on Deep Stories. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video.